Hello and welcome back to Unfinished Business with me, Amani. This is episode three and today I have my good friend. It's Pokey Banks, baby. Today we're going to be going through loads of stuff about finance and whatever other boring stuff you talk about on your TikTok. But first, why don't you start with telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, me, Pokey Banks, I'm 21 years old. I go to the University of Nottingham studying finance and and management. Now, I talk about personal finance and investing online on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. And the reason I do this is to teach you guys what school doesn't. So that's why I do what I do. You can tell he was practicing that in the mirror this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was well rehearsed. I like that though. But your TikToks and stuff are mostly about educating, like you said, teaching people what they don't know in school. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's rewarding to do what you do? Well, look. When you talk about money, it just so happens money it comes does. along with it, it okay? And the reason that is, is because the brands that want to advertise to your platform, to your audience, the credit card companies, mm. these are investment companies, and if you get one customer over, they're pretty much customers for yeah. potentially a lifetime. So, for example, if I get someone to tap to a credit card now, they're going to make money for them in terms of fees of credit card fees, mortgages, they can advertise all sorts mm. of products. So, when you talk about money, you attract a certain individual that watches your content and oh. they have the mindset of cool let me put this money and invest it and which can make other people other companies a lot more money so um, coincidentally yeah talk about money it is it is, it rewarding. is rewarding and it's rewarding as well to be able to help people become more financially literate because it's not something that we talk about in school they don't yeah. tell you about how to pay your bills or anything like that or yeah. any side hustles nothing yeah and no, it's a shame and i feel like yeah. it's been well money's been a taboo topic for quite yeah. a while and i feel like now's the time to like let it be out there yeah, and let a lot know. of stuff like we're taught don't ask people what their salary is or like it's things that should be an open discussion but um when did you start tiktok and kind of teaching people when i started um, my whole story okay cool so first off i actually started the instagram page this was called self-elevation it had uh, around 400 followers in three months now to me personally that wasn't that wasn't great um, okay. i felt like that wasn't good enough okay. so um and i was in um i was doing my a levels at the time so year 13 and i felt like you know what let me stop this and focus on my a levels Later on that year, this was 2019 by the way, later on that year, towards the end of 2019, I'm thinking, you know what, 2020 is coming, a new decade, let me start something new and fresh just to start off the decade right. So I'm thinking, let me start a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel. But then my friend recommended, you know what, jump on TikTok. Gary Vee's talking about it. Um, it's the next big thing. If you jump on now, you have the first movers advantage. So this is when you're first to a market and you gain the majority of the market share. So I thought, you know what, all right. So 2020, the 1st of January, I just made my first TikTok video. As your New Year's resolution is, I'm going to be a TikToker. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. it. How's <laughs> TikTok? I wouldn't say New Year's resolution, but I thought, you know, it's a fresh new year. Yeah. I'm, it's a decade. I'm feeling refreshed. So I started that. A facing TikTok. It took me an hour to make. Um, lots of mistakes, but as time goes on, you get better of talking. You do. And then, um, yeah, from there, the rest is history. Um, and to be fair, in terms of the growth, um, mm -hmm. it was pretty quick. Oh, do you remember? Do you remember when you had your first viral video? Like, people say viral, you know, you no, gotta be I think like. There's different stages of viral. Yeah, there is. At the there time, is. 10k views was viral, and then no. 100k is viral, and then yeah. a million is viral. But um, I think my first big video that really took off. Um, okay, my first video that got, I was getting around 200 views per okay. video. Then okay. I got 3,000, and that was um, I was speaking about um, oh, this is, <laughs> back then I was doing anything. To I get said views. viral, 3,000 views. <laughs> no. You had more than that, I'm sure. Come on. No, no, we'll, we'll get on to that. But okay, cool. Let's move on to the bigger stuff. <laughs> Okay, the biggest, okay, the biggest stuff, um, yeah. I made a video, um, three things, oh, what was it about, three, um, uh, three things something, but I got 150k views, okay. and to me, that was wild. Your first mega video, yeah. massive, from 400 to 150k, yeah. it's a big jump. Yeah, it's a big, big jump. You think, wow, well, that's it, I'm an influencer now. Yeah, it was I'm crazy, it was crazy, because, um, <laughs> like, imagine 150 people watching your video, I just didn't, mm. I couldn't comprehend it. Yeah. Um, and then from then on, I think my next big viral video um, I, I made a video about um, why buying design is bad. I I've got like, designer. Yeah, yeah. Why, why it's yeah. bad and why it's hustling backwards. I and mean, then I got around like 1 million views in yeah. like, 24 hours. So like, that's like mega viral. Yeah. That's like your big, your big boy numbers is where you think like, this is, this is insane. Yeah, but yeah. at what point do you think you kind of clocked onto the fact that, okay, I am actually a little bit of an influencer now. I um, am a finance influencer. Is that what you would categorize yeah, as? Yeah, some people say film influencer, finance influencer, it's, it's all sorts of names. Is that what they say? Um, investment influencer, but anyways. Yeah. Um, in terms of when I realized I'm an influencer was when, this is actually a crazy story. Um, I was going to Ghana and um, on the plane, someone recognized me hmm. from my TikToks and yeah. um, he was saying, oh, you're the economic guy on TikTok. 
and um, he was saying, I, I invested in this because of you. And that's oh, when wow. I realized I've directly influenced this person. Yeah. So I must influence all the but others. But that's like, a, that's like a, a turning point as well in your life to think like, that, like, who, you always think, who am I as a person that I can influence somebody to, to be better or do better? And it always does come as a shock. Like, mm -hmm. how yeah. was that feeling for you, like, emotions wise? Um, you know what? To be fair, though, I've been, you know, helping and guiding people mm. before TikTok as well. So in my area, I was kind of known as a money guy. Okay. So um, I was, I've always been used to, like, helping people with their fancies. But yeah. when I took it to, like, the national scale, it was just like, Wow, like the fruits of my labor are finally paying off. Yeah. People are really getting to know what, I, what I'm really about eventually, yeah. like all the hard work is paying off. So I felt great and just humbled as well. Because... Oh, that's really lovely as well. It's really lovely. Mm. But TikTok does come with its downsides. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steph. No, Steph. It's a question that you probably dread in, but how does it feel to be a meme? Um, I, well, cool. You yeah, will have to, first... you know, we'll play some clips, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck best, baby. That's the difference between me and you. Because while you were sitting around, waiting, doing niche, I was out making moves. Is she mad? <laughs> <laughs> Is she mad? Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear. Would you slap your mother for one billion dollars? How does it feel to be a meme? You know, like, okay, people are making fun of you for you know what you said. What you yeah, so, okay, first of my whole mindset is cool if you're gonna go around and spread my ideologies in whatever way you see forward i kind of see you guys as a disciple okay you're doing what that's, the disciples are doing for jesus the, no 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 we're not we're not comparing poker banks to jesus <laughs> do, okay, no. let's not do that one <laughs> okay no but how i see it right is that um you guys making memes and whatnot mm. for me anyway what you're doing is you're prolonging my career, you're making me more relevant, you're giving me free promotion, essentially. Yeah. So, when I first saw it, I kind of saw it as like a marketing technique. Of course, It's yeah. making my name a household name, essentially, mm. within the UK. So, um, yeah, some of the memes were funny, some of them I didn't get. Some of them probably made you cry a little bit, but at least, you know. No, no, you know what, I never <laughs> actually, I never ever cried, I, I, but I just, I did, like, be in, like, confusion, like, what did you mean by this? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, what I talk about, You've taken it in the wrong context, but anyways. Yeah, of course. It was just, it was definitely like an exaggeration of what you, you meant. Mm. But TikTok is TikTok, isn't it? It's what they do. It's yeah, be no. trolls and make fun of you. Yeah, it's mad. And to be fair, I've never even you know, received any sorts of memes or hate yeah. before. So it was, yeah. a, it was a new experience. But you, you did feeling. have, did you ever have like comments beforehand where you'd think like, oh, come on, like that's just unnecessary. You don't need to be, you don't need to be a troll or something like yeah, that. Stuff you yeah, said. loads. Um, and I was bad. It was bad for me to um, get it because before I never used to receive it. So when I used to see it, I used to reply to every hate comment and like, argue yeah. back. So <laughs> I'm going back and forth in the comments. It was, it was nuts. It was nuts. So... I, so, I, was, yeah. I was a hate comment at one point. I wasn't a hate comment. You know what, it's how we met. It's how we met. You know what, so, <laughs> that's a funny story. So, what? so basically, should I tell you what happened? We, I have another good friend, right, who makes content. And this one, <laughs> this one, he, he like ripped off his content completely. Oh he ripped off his content. So naturally, I was like, come on, you're ripping off my friend. And he was like, no, I'm not. Bear in mind, this guy's like famous at the time. He's got like 200, 300K or something on TikTok. And I was like, just like trolling him in his comments. And he started arguing with me. I was like, shocked. <laughs> I was like. Was he really, was he shocked? Was he... Yeah, I was shocked. I didn't think he was going to respond. I was thinking like, he's probably got something better to do. He's like arguing with me. And then he DMs me to argue with me. <laughs> Okay, and cool. And we're like two grown adults arguing over TikTok. It's so bad. It's okay, here's my he, here's my side of the Looking story back. of things. Here's my side of the story of things. I make you know obviously great minds think alike. So I make a video. It was a direct copy. Like I, you know, it, it Jordan. Just, I'm defending it, you to, it till just, now. It just so happens that you know we talk about the same thing and it's the same concept. So then when I saw a comment, I was so confused. Himself. I was like, "There's no way." Like oh, I, I thought your chat eruption. That's how I got introduced to. Jordan, actually. No, I don't like you, Jordan, before that. I'm sure you did. You knew Jordan before that. 
Let's see, he's, he's literally, he's oh, maybe, maybe, on camera. Maybe, 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 might have. But um, anyways. Exposing Pokebanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have, but anyways, that's um, how I got into it. And um, yeah, no, nah, I didn't mean to copy <laughs> Jay and then, um, yeah, so. Oh my gosh, sorry, I was a troll. But um, aside from that, your serious hate comments where people genuinely mm. are coming at you. Do you feel being a young person of colour, specifically a young black male, affects the way that people perceive you on TikTok? Yeah, most def. Um, I feel like it was just... Someone put it from an outside point of view for me. Imagine you're scrolling on TikTok, a young baby-faced black male is telling you what to do with your finances. Yeah. And he's probably younger than you. And then when he put it from that point of view, then I kind of realised I kind of see it where they're seeing it from and furthermore back in the day i used to be very vocal in the comments mm. going back and forth argue them, yeah. so what energy you put out there is what you receive back so it got to, it took me a while to understand why i was coming but now i get it and it's, it's actually calmed down now but at the time um what, what was the question how i dealt with it or how no just how you think or, felt, or how yeah how you feel about how people perceive you on tiktok because of that um you know it is what it is you know you make mistakes you learn from them you gain oh. wisdom from them but um you know that's just my journey and you know it'll turn into something great magnificent magnificent one day it will hard work pays off no no what's there but um aside from your hate comments your trolls your memes did you feel backlash from your peers the people around you no um and the reason why um is because they already knew i was about that um mm. i've been like that i've you know anyone i went to school with will tell you i was the type of guy to be selling sweets to you in school selling drinks yeah, it's like that yeah so that's how it all stemmed from so um, people always like an entrepreneur born an entrepreneur like yeah per se you know we came early around 15 yeah. years old they really clicked in and um 17 you really clicked in and mm. um yeah so anyone around me they always they just see us like oh Poku's just doing what he does what he's always done yeah just on the bigger scale yeah. so it was just it wasn't a surprise or anything um, so yeah. yeah you don't feel like you get hate from like you, do do you get people saying it's Poker Banks baby at uni or like yeah in real all life the time. Um, yeah like, you take it on the chin yeah it's fun it's fun like, yeah it's no it's, it, I like it people are yeah. saying my slogan you know it's out there people now feeling famous <laughs> I guess so you know um, yeah this I guess so it's just it's just great it's a great feeling to know that people have taken in what you've put out there and applied it to my life. It's like an ideology at this it point. It is, it is. But it's good that you have a positive mindset about it. It's good. Yeah. And it's definitely something you need when, when you're on TikTok is to have a real thick skin. Mm, yeah, I really advise that any of you lot just take the comments with a pinch of salt. Some of them are genuine and try and give you positive feedback. Like constructive criticism is one thing, but TikTok is full of your trolls. Full of trolls. Um, you're like, they'll nitpick everything, every little thing you do. <laughs> every little thing. I got one, what did I get? You sell shit products and you think you're Jeff Bezos. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> what did I do to you? What did I ever do to you? They feel real personal as well, don't yeah, they? <laughs> yeah, and I feel like it's just them showing their insecurities yeah. and trying to push it onto you. Definitely. So. But also, okay, this is my favourite little part of my show. It's what I like to call struggles. And it's mm. where I put a question on my story and I ask people what they're struggling with. And I've got quite a few, but I'll read you out <laughs> one of the best ones. So I asked my followers what they're struggling with specifically to do with TikTok. Seeing as we've got a little bit of a TikTok expert here, I thought we'd ask him some questions. Oh my gosh, I did get some crazy ones, but somebody says, no matter how hard I try, I can Google and YouTube for advice, but I can't get smooth transitions and I have low confidence because of it. Mm -hmm. I think she's meaning, okay, it, it, it can mean like different things, right? Transitions as in like your editing transitions or transitions as in like, being able to cut your points across. Mm -hmm. But either way, it's causing her low confidence. How do you combat low confidence in terms of TikTok? Firstly, I always believe it comes down to practice. Like I said, my first 30 second TikTok video took me an hour to make. Mm. Um, I was stuttering all over the place and I still started till today, but yeah. I just learned that I need to take it back, take it back a bit and then understand, let me try different ways of doing it. So slowing down my speech or practicing in front of a mirror or just practicing and building wisdom because I've been doing this for two years now. So again, speaking to a camera, it gets easier as you do it a lot more, a lot yeah. more. So um, for, for those that um, are struggling, just understand that it's a process and not everyone's born talented that can just do it like a natural straight away. So I'm just, I say, just stay consistent with it. And with that consistency, it will help to make your videos pop out and you'll be able to convey your points a lot more smoothly. Yeah, and it helps when you're, you're born confident, like you're clearly a very confident person. Yeah. Some people aren't and that's okay. You can come up with lots of different ways to, to put out content. Like yeah. what's new nowadays is people clipping up videos and putting them in. Yeah. That's something new people are doing or using podcast clips or yeah. voiceovers. Sometimes it might help to be, you'll feel more confident if you don't have your face in the camera. Yeah. But there's lots of different things that you can do. I know that 
it's a difficult process though. Yeah. It's not easy, but yeah, it's, 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 like it's you said, it's, it's practice makes perfect, right? Definitely. But, um, I have a couple of questions for you actually about your, your press and your publicity. Mm -hmm. A couple of ones that might be a little bit, a little bit controversial, but how did you get yourself into these papers? What do you think it was that brought you, brought attention from them to you? Um, one could say, you know, a young black male is doing great things for the community, mm -hmm. trying to educate the nation. So they saw us like, you know, let's get this person on mm -hmm. to then speak about finances to be a role model for those. But in terms of how I got them, I'll be real. Um, my first one was the Telegraph. I think the Telegraph asked TikTok um, for a person and then TikTok, rec TikTok UK recommended me. Mm -hmm. So that's how they put us together and then they did the interview there. Yeah. And then from there, it's like a chain, it's like a link, a chain on effect. So, it's like one comes and they all do. Yeah, so once they've seen that, they're like, okay, cool, we can go to him to, um, yeah. to do that. So the Guardian came to me twice. Um, and that was great as well. Just wanted to speak to me about, you know, the crypto boom and personal finance and giving advice on, on guidance on TikTok. So, um, yeah, th to be fair, I'll be real. They all came in my inbox, per se. Um, I didn't really do much outreach, per se. But, yeah, it's great. I'm grateful for all the opportunities. And, um, oh, that yeah. was amazing. I would say that because you're quite influential in, like, the finance business, there's not many of us that put out content that's related to that, and especially not people of colour that do that. Mm. Do you feel that affected how you got into them or how they perceived you or how, like, how do you feel that affected that? Um, I feel like it affected, I feel like it affected them in a positive way because especially yeah. for my community as well, they feel like, okay, cool. If he's making it cool to do that, to be thinking about the fancies, yeah. they're all going to start taking note and making use of it, especially of those of colour. Um, and I feel like a lot of them actually, you know, connect with me as well on that level. Um, and then um, again, for the others, they, they may see as like, cool, this black guy is saying this, we need to, maybe take notes because if he's doing it, then what are we doing? Why am I doing it? Yeah, yeah. so um, I feel like it, it It was very, very different, especially to come in such a uh, young age and just do yeah. it like that, so. Do you think you have a supportive community? Yeah, I would, I would say so, yeah. I feel like my people rather there, um, they're down to invest and they, you know, especially with my lads as well, I'm very, very interactive with them, engaging with them. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're it's down. It's nice, it's nice that you've built like, uh, it is like a safe space pretty much to be able to talk about finance for young people especially men to be able to open up and like you know mm. say like, okay maybe I'm struggling with something like this and be able to look towards you for advice and I think you have your uh, your other business as well that you oh the Gen Z club yes yeah. yeah. so that's pretty much creating a hub of opportunities yeah. for Gen Z so people born between 1997 and 2012 mm -hmm. so essentially those growing up on social media and the internet this is a place where you can come and connect and meet like-minded individuals and yeah. network so like I say, you're always one conversation away from becoming rich. So just make sure you're out there looking for the next best opportunity. That's amazing. What a lovely rewarding thing to do. Mm. But yeah, thank you for being on my show. Nah, my little podcast. It. it was great to have you. No, nah, thanks. Yeah. I thanks for bringing me here. You already know what it is. It's Pokey Dance, baby. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Tune in to the next episode.